Have you ever gone into a Games Workshop store and found a box of Dwarf Thunderers and Quarrelers and wondered what's inside it? Well, today we're going to look at that on Monster Hobbies. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello everybody, my name is Trevor Ruslescu and I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. And today we are going to look at the Dwarf Thunderer Quarreler box in further depth as we open it up, take out the components and see what's in the box. So without further ado, let's go down to our table and take a look at these amazing old figures from Games Workshop. Which is better? The Dwarf Thunderer Gun or the Dwarf Quarreler Crossbow? Well, this is a question that has been asked by many a dwarf throughout history. And today we are going to open up this box and see what's inside. But before we do that, let us go back and have a little bit of a better history as to how these boxes of dwarves came into existence. Back in 2005-2006, the Games Workshop brought out Warhammer Fantasy Battles 7th Edition. And with that book, they brought out a new Warhammer Army book entitled Dwarfs. The Dwarfs of Zofbar. Anyway, inside there, we get our first glimpse of the brand new, totally new, totally redesigned Dwarf Thunders and Quarrelers. Now this was a plastic box set in which you could build either version just by using some different hands and different weapons. So that's where our box of the day came in. With this box you could also upgrade them into the Dwarf Rangers by adding in the hand axe here and a buckler on the back. And of course their stats were included inside this book along with many many other dwarfs. And now this box is still being produced by Games Workshop with the square bases, but you can use these as dispossessed warriors, well, thunderers and quarrelers, let's be more specific, in the new Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Although these are older models, they are still current in the battle lines. So let's take a look at what's inside the box really briefly so that you get a basic and then we will look at the actual molds of these figures in further detail. All right so just to begin with we get this great cover art showing the Quarreler and the Thunderer defending a, a long wall here in some dwarf hold. If you turn the box this way it shows the Thunderer image and if you display it on the shelf this way you get the Actually, you get the Thunderer here. <laughs> Sorry, I made a mistake. This is the Quarreler image. Games Workshop had this unique way of displaying their boxes back in the day. It's either this way on the shelf or this way with more piled on top. Here you get all the safety instructions and whatever. On the bottom is a photograph of the Thunderers all built up and how you can make a Thunderer or a Quarreler. And then along the side here are the actual instructions of how these figures go together and the different guys that they are, like for example the standard bearer and up here is the musician and then your champions or whatever regular guys can be in here. There's a the champion with the two hand guns and it is quite a cool kit. Now as we open it up you will see that The sprues are all molded in gray. Sorry. <laughs> That's why I'm using the green backdrop so we can see them. It comes with 16 square bases <sighs> in a plastic bag. <laughs> it's not my day for filming, is it? And we actually get two sets of sprue out here. And uh, there's four copies of each of the sprues. Now let's just take our camera back a bit. There we go. Okay, so our first set of sprue, I can take and remove the other three copies. 
has our dwarf heroes molded right in. Well, not heroes, but you know, infantry. <laughs> so you get four sets of legs and then six sets of heads, which you can use in different ways. Um, four of these, or three of these, yeah, four, have the arm molded in place, while two of them do not. Now you can use these guys as the champion or as drummers, depending on what you want to do. There's the bucklers, the quarrels, and the quarreler hands up here. And then we take that one aside. And again with our four copies of the same sprue. The four copies will give you 16 of either quarrelers or thunderers but only one of each type, if you know what I mean. So this one has the banners. So there's the banner, and here is the icon, which is an open book with an anvil on the top. And of course, we've got the pole arm for holding those on. You glue them on into these groove bits based on how you want to do it. Then we have our brace of pistols here, different types of pistols and little axes for the rangers that they used to have back in the day. And then, of course, our guns and some more shields, some quivers and arrows, things like this. The drumsticks down here and a pipe for your champion. There's two different types of bucklers, ones with faces here and ones with the dwarf runes on them. So now let's actually go down and take a closer look at the detail in this great kit. We will start our review with a look at our six dwarf faces. The dwarf on the left is one of the two included in this set that does not have his left arm molded to his body. Usually this is the face you want to use to represent your musician because you can glue the drum to his runestone medallion. The dwarf on the right has four runestone medallions tied to his beard. He matches the thunderer on the box art. I always like this face out of all the dwarf faces. If you have a favorite, let us know in the comments below. The next pair of faces show the unit champion on the left and a soldier with a ponytail braid. The veteran is a second face molded with both arm sockets left open. This allows you to use the brace of pistols option in addition to the rifle crossbow option. The dwarf on the right has a hornless helmet with a nose guard. Like the other faces, he has his left arm molded in place. These are the last pair of dwarf faces. I like to think that these two are younger dwarfs since their beards are not braided. The one on the left wears a hornless helmet without a nose guard, while the dwarf on the right matches a quarreler on the box art. Now we will have a look at the legs and backs of our dwarfs. The legs on the left feature chainmail bordered by metal bandings. The legs on the right look more like chainmail over heavy fabric. From the back, we can see the chainmail extending to the back between the dwarf's shoulders. Next, we have the legs without cape and the legs with the cape. The cape represents the best cover for a dwarf ranger of old. From the back, we can see the folds of the cape. If you are good at painting camouflage, then this cape can offer you a ton of possibilities. Here are the six stocks for the dwarf crossbow. The mechanism is well detailed and includes a nice set of gears, trigger, and pull mechanism for resetting the bowstring. Each crossbow has its own unique look and style. Two crossbows are designed for single hand use for the veteran or to represent a reloading. The kit also includes four drawn bows and two resting bows. Note the nice gear work on the tops of the bows. This now brings us to the 12 bucklers. The first set of eight include letters from the Klinkaroon, the dwarf alphabet. From left to right, we have Z, W, B, and E, followed by R, K, M, and F, or V. The final four shields show the ancestor faces. We will now examine a range of dwarf handguns and pistols for the Thunderers. The first three include the right arm and left hand molded to the gun. These handguns are intended for those dwarf faces with the left arm molded in place. These guns have great detail on the barrels and stocks. For more realism, try drilling out the plastic from the center of each barrel. That little detail goes a long way. This sprue includes the brace of pistols for the veteran and a single arm handgun for the veteran 
standard bearer, or to represent a reload. Next we have the two drumsticks for the musician as well as a spare two-hand handgun. The drumsticks are perfect for beating on this drum. Here's a collection of ranger's axes as well as a spare pistol. Each axe has a special rune on it and the majority are intended to glue on the back of the quarrelers. This collection of parts is intended to dress up your veteran. Here we see a clay pipe for smoking tobacco, a pistol that can be glued to the belt, and an open hand to hold that pistol, an axe or to use to issue commands like halt. In the Age of Sigmar, this is known as a runic icon and is used to attempt to dispel any spell that targets this unit. It features a hammer striking an anvil set on top of a book bearing the A.R. clinker runes, some ancestor faces, a buckler, and a flying hammer. The pole is on the left. This is the alternative banner which is used in Age of Sigmar to improve the bravery of the unit in the Battleshock tests. I like these banners because you can paint your regiment colors or army symbol on it. Which do you prefer? Icon or banner? Let us know in the description below. Finally, we look at the Thunderer Quarreler ammunition pouches. The set includes several of these, including a quarrel bolt in a closed hand for those dwarves reloading their bows. The Thunderer pouches include round vials of gunpowder and a medallion. All these items glue to the belts. The final two long icons glue to the banner as extra detail. Now I'm going to show you some of the dwarfs that I've built using this set. These dwarves represent quarrelers from the Crack Eight Peaks that were found in the Warhammer Dwarfs 8th edition. The central three figures, the musician, the standard bearer, and the champion, are from different dwarf sets. The champion is from the Drunken Dwarf set. Here's another close-up view of this unit. Now we get into a specialist unit that I made. These don't really exist in any realm other than on my tabletop. This is a unit of dwarf pistoliers. All these dwarves are carrying a hand axe and a pistol. And here's a closer view of them. Next we have the original dwarf rangers that I made. These guys carry the crossbow. One guy is smoking a pipe there. I've used a beer barrel from the warrior set for the standard bearer. And the champion sports a brace of pistols. Now here's an angled shot that shows the axes and the buckler mounted onto their backs. Now we step into the realm of Age of Sigmar. All these dwarves have been remounted onto round bases and they show the Corlers axe. I still have to glue the bucklers on and give another five axes to this unit. These guys are arranged in a unit of 10, which is more consistent with Age of Sigmar. The previous guys were arranged in 16, which is right out of the box. I hand painted that banner. It is a tree icon. For these dwarves, I'm supposed to be fighting with wood elves in my fantasy realms here. <laughs> now we get a closer view of the quarrelers. The one guy has a broken helmet. I glued the, uh, the horn back on, but you can see the crack line on it. However, this is the kind of detail work I've put into these guys. They all sport wooden runes because they are supposed to be in the forest and getting gold and brass and that sort of thing is a little bit harder to find, but these guys look pretty good. And you can see the uh, hand holding the quarrel bolt ready to reload his crossbow. And here we get into our dwarf thunderers, and they're carrying a banner from the warriors actually, but with the same tree icon. I've used the dog from the old Bretonia pack, which was pretty cool. And uh, these guys have the drummer. I still have to paint their gun steel, except for the one guy beside the banner there. He's completely finished. And now we've got a close-up view of the command crew. You can see the drummer and the standard bearer. And the champion in this set is actually the guy with the horns in the previous picture, but I've used the painted barrel. So this concludes my painted dwarfs from this box set. And that concludes our look at the Dwarf Thunderer Quarreler box. Well, I hope you enjoyed that look into our Dwarf Thunderer and Quarreler box. Wasn't that some cool old great stuff from back in the day? And if you've got a Dwarden army, a dispossessed army, please let us know in the comments below. And while you're doing stuff, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and click that notification bell so that every time I make a new What's in the Box video, you're the first one to see it. And please help us get this video up to 100 likes. Now tune in next week when we get to look at the 
Caradron Overlords Star Collecting Box. And that one is the newer, newer Dwarden type model kits from Games Workshop, which are really cool. And until next time, happy model building.